There's another little short video. I've been having a bit of fun with uh, this stuff here. This is uh, the tubing for neon sign manufacturing. Uh, and I've been sealing off one end and sealing the second end once it's vacuumed down and some gas or something's been put in it. So I've got a selection here of uh, sealed tubes. These are just got different gases in them um, at low pressure or varying pressures actually. Some have got the remnants of fluorescent paste from fluorescent tubes in them and some powder in there. And they're sitting on a plastic lid here with two bits of copper tape connected up to this transformer here. These transformers are actually, oops, these transformers are used to be found in television sets uh, using CRTs which are all disappearing now and even the ones you did find didn't have just the coil, they had uh, rectifiers built in but this one is just producing high voltage AC out of here, it's you know, above 20 kilohertz. So I can connect the, the output of the transformer to the two metal bits of tape here. So most of these are just sealed ends. This one actually here has a an electrode from a, a neon tube in here too. And say this is the fluorescent material. There's actually three different types in here. Um, and some, this one here has iodine in it. And that, that's quite interesting. I'll show you what that, that does. So see these ones, look at closer look. I don't know if you can quite see the powder in that one. The um, little copper tape ends aren't necessary but they're there because if you if it develops an arc it can crack the glass. You see if I bring up the voltage the, the lights start to glow faintly in the tubes so you get the gas discharges. So the yellowy one or the reddish ones are actually neon. Uh, the, none of them are particularly pure because I've had some air in, in them. Some of these are argon filled as well. So you can also hear quite a lot of uh, corona that's producing more ozone here than a, <laughs> a big Clive video. Uh, but we'll see without the lights on, it's a bit clearer. This is quite interesting is particularly this tube here, and I don't know if we can see the one that's got the um, iodine in it, they always seem to come up with two arcs. There's there's, there's two discharge paths in there. Uh, because this one's also got some iodine in it, and you can see a tendency for that in there as well. I probably can't touch these, it's just this I don't want a, a burn off the the high frequency arc. This one's got powder in it from a fluorescent tube and some of slightly higher pressure. So with the ones that have different pressures actually you change the voltage, gives you different kind of patterns in the discharge like that goes in a very thin line and if I bring the voltage down it broadens out. Sometimes they change colour a bit too. So that's the voltage dropping. And that one there takes a bit of a high voltage to start. It's actually quite interesting that they can get them all to light at one time. Because once one comes on it becomes a partly of a uh, a load on the circuit. Okay. One of the practical uses I have for these little tubes is if you're testing a Tesla coil but it's not actually producing a, an arc, if you bring one of these close to it you'll see that uh, you, it lights up in the field. So it's quite a useful test just to see that the the field is there. Um, you can do this, I've done it for years with a fluorescent tube, but the problem is with fluorescent tubes the pins sometimes produce an arc and, and create a burn on your skin if you're too near it.